everybody, Jeremy here from Brew and Blooms. We're out at a friend of mine's house getting ready to make a gluten-free IPA uh, with an homage to Ghost Fish Brewing. This is a recipe based off of their grapefruit IPA. Uh, so right now we got water to a gentle boil. We're gonna add some calcium sulfate. We started off with reverse osmosis water so that way we know exactly what we're dealing with. Now I'm just gonna stir that in. Uh, right. That looks like we still got a little calcium sulfate. There we go. Got it all out now. It is very windy today, so we got a couple wind breaks up to keep the wind off of us so we can keep a nice vigorous boil here. Now we've got our gypsum added to help condition the reverse osmosis water. Now we'll go through real quick what we're going to be adding to our gluten-free beer now. So our backbone is gonna be sorghum extract. Raw honey. And simplicity sugar. We're gonna add some maltodextrin for mouthfeel and body. Our hop choices are going to be, oh, we got our boil back already. Our hop choices are gonna be Chinook hop and Cascade hop. The reason we picked these two guys is because they're always gonna be around. They're not a proprietary strain, so we don't have to worry about it going kind of uh, out of stock, so to speak, because these, these guys, we can buy the rhizomes and grow them in our backyard if we wanted to. All right, so now, uh, this is a pretty simple process with the extract brewing. Uh, we're just gonna be adding those ingredients we mentioned earlier. There is no mashing, uh, so the process is relatively quick compared to an all grain batch. So here we go. We're gonna start adding our ingredients now. We're gonna add the malt extract. I'm sorry, not malt extract. Oh, this is a gluten-free. It's not malt extract, it's sorghum extract. It's uh, malted sorghum, but it is not malted barley. Uh, we're gonna add this guy first. There's gonna be three cans total added, but we're only gonna add one right now because we want to make sure that we don't caramelize any of it and we're going to add it very close to the end of boil. So if you notice, this stuff is pretty thick. So what we'll end up doing is we'll add some hot water. Watch this pour in. Wait for it. Wait for it. Thick as molasses. A good little trick is to put this in some warm water to soften it up so it pours out easier. Unfortunately, I did not do because I was not prepared. Sometimes that happens. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this in to make sure that we don't have any scorching on the bottom of the brew pot with the liquid malt extract. That is one of the, the downsides of it. If it sits on the bottom, the potential for scorching is strong. So as you can see, it's just Pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. That's bad. Sorry. So we've just about got all of it out of the can. We'll be going to the simplicity next. Now I'm not done with this can. Like I said, I'm going to throw some hot water in there to get the rest of the goodness out of here but I'm not gonna sit here and wait 15 minutes to get the last little bits out when I can throw some hot water in there, slosh it around a little bit, slosh it around a little bit, and then pour it in. Okay, so now we're going to add 
our one of the two cans of, or one of the two bags of Simplicity. This is Belgian candied sugars. This particular one's got a very light color, white almost. You could do the same thing with adding a little bit of hot water to this guy, but it pours out much, much easier, even when it's on the cooler side. Okay. We've got that added now. So now we're going to again pay homage to our friends at Ghost Fish. Thank you again for the idea. Wonderful beer. I'm going to be adding our maltodextrin. Now, like I said, it is it is very, very windy out here today, so the goal is two pounds. We may not get all two pounds in there. Oh, gotta be prepared. A nice breezy Indiana summer. Oh no, it's not summer yet. I am in a shirt without a jacket outside, which is crazy. Maltodextrin to dissolve in our pound so we're right at the max of what this big guy is going to hold this is a 16 gallon pot so that foil off is going to give us a little bit of extra space but yeah, we're we are definitely pushing it with 13 gallons and then all of the extract that's going to get added Gonna, gonna definitely definitely put it right at the, the limits but anything for a friend again just another another pound of maltodextrin that we're going to add in If you hold it over the steam, it'll start to clump up like dry malt extract will also. Not just clump up in the wort. All right, that's our second pound of maltodextrin. So now we're gonna give her a little more gas here and bring her back up to a nice vigorous boil. We're gonna have to be careful not to have a boil over because we are pretty high on the old pot here. All right, we'll get back to you in a little bit. All right, everybody, we're getting ready to do our first hop addition or a bittering hop. We're gonna be using Chinook like we were talking about earlier. This is going to be a 45 minute hop edition. Uh, sometimes people like to do a 60 minute hop edition as their bittering hop. Uh, usually as long as it's done before the 30 minute mark is considered more of your bittering hop. So we're going to be utilizing a little hop filtering system so that way the hop vegetative matter doesn't get imparted so much into the wort. 
And then our final beer won't have as much vegetative matter in there. But so right now we're gonna put the wood. This guy just kind of hangs off to the side. Stick that in there. We're gonna take our one ounce at a time. So we're gonna do two total ounces. Uh, we gotta go grab our scissors here. Hold on, we'll be right back. All right, so now we're actually getting ready to add our bittering Chinook hops. So we're gonna do one ounce in there. We're gonna do our second ounce. Oh, look at that steam. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit chilly here and definitely breezy. Now we just take this guy just screws on to the top, allows for our hop interaction. Oh, look at that, hop break happening. Woo, that smells wonderful, kids. Oh, that was close, that was touch and go. All right, there we go. Now we got our 45 minute hop addition in there. All right, now we're gonna do our 15 minute hop addition, we're gonna do an ounce of Cascade. Cascade is what they call a dual hop, so you can use it for bittering or for flavor and aroma. So we're gonna pull our hop filter out. Woo, it's warm. Woo, that's hot as heck. Hot as heck. We're gonna have to do a little adjustment here and get it. There we go. Just took a second to cool down. I just grabbed it a little too fast. And we'll hang the lid. Take our aroma cascade, pour that right in there with our ounce of Chinook. I'm sorry, two ounces of Chinook. Ah, darn it. Let's screw this guy back on. Screw it. Let's get it back on there. Ha ha ha. Don't quit my day job, huh? Alright, so we're gonna make sure we get that good interaction. More hot break. Tire off to the side. Alright, 15 minute done. 15 minute hop addition done. Getting very close to the end. Now we're just gonna throw in our chiller. Holy shit, the excitement of it all never ends. There's a little bit of water left in there, so it's fitting it out right now. We just gotta make sure that it does not end up in the brew kettle. Ooh. All right, killer. All right, now we are getting ready to add our last little bit of fermentables. We're gonna do the other bag of Simplicity two more cans of liquid malt extract and then rinse them out. We've got the one can from earlier that's been rinsed out. We're gonna be dumping in there, you can hear it sloshing around. And then last but not least, we're gonna add two pounds of honey. So we're gonna start off with the simplicity. You can see we've got our wort chiller stuck in there with the, oop, with the, Hose is hooked up. That is to sanitize the wort chiller. It's been sitting in there about the last 15 minutes or so. All right, we got all the simplicity goodness. Now we're gonna, this is gonna be the original can of extract syrup we poured in from earlier. So now if you notice, oh, there's still just a little bit in there. Can you see that? 
There's still just a little bit left in it, so we're gonna rinse that out and get all of out of there we can, all the goodness we can. Now we're gonna pour our cans of liquid mold extract in. You see we're a little more prepared this time. We cut the paper off so that way it pours a little easier. Still gonna stir it to make sure that it doesn't drop down to the bottom and scorch. Oh, it smells wonderful. So, brewing gluten-free extract batch versus brewing your standard extract batch is basically the same thing. Um, there are no steeping grains in this, which a lot of the extract uh, barley-based or wheat-based beers are going to have. So, we got that guy in there. One more can of sorghum. I don't know if you can see all that with all the steam, but it is rolling right out. Thick as thick can be, flavorful as flavorful can be. Now it is dark out, so that's another little issue now. Oh, there's the alarm. We need to do our And then our last fermentable before we clean out the other containers is going to be our honey here. So we're doing all these really late additions so that way it doesn't caramelize. This should be a pretty light in color beer. Oh, you can hear my alarm there still. I'm trying to get this honey in. We're going to just take this guy off and pour it in that way. So we want to stir the honey in, make sure that we're not letting it sit on the bottom and squirt. We'll throw some wort in this guy too to clean it up. Get every little bit of goodness out of it that we can. But we got our Last hop addition to put in there. So again, we're gonna yank this guy out, let it cool off for a second, and then put our last ounce of hops in there. I'm gonna cut the flame off right. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. A lot of wort in this guy. I got a little wild there. Got some down on my burner. So that's gonna caramelize pretty safe. Oh, thank you. Now we're gonna turn off the burner. Flame out. Thank you. It's always good to have a helping hand. Big shout out to our friend Hank. Well, if I don't turn this alarm off, it's gonna break my neck. No, he would start with my legs first and give me a chance to at least turn it off. All right, there's the last ounce of Cascade. Oh, I just gotta get this guy on there. If I had gloves on like I know I should, that wouldn't be an issue. I'd be able to handle that heat a little better. 
All right, that is it. Now we're gonna get this wort chiller going and get this down so that way we can get our yeast in there and rack it over into our fermenters. All right, we'll talk to you. All right, so now we are, we already started racking over the beer. We got it down to about what, the 74, 73? Yep. And uh, so now we're putting it in the fermenter. The wind has dramatically died down, so we were able to take our wind block down, and then that gave us another step. So we've got a better flow rate because the potential energy is different because the oh, the beer coming out of the brew pot is much, much higher than the beer sitting down in the fermenter, or soon to be beer. Not beer quite yet. Oh. Can you see that down there? A little dark, but... That's just a wide mouth glass fermenter we like to use. We're gonna do a little dry hopping. All right, we'll get this racked into a couple carboys and add our liquid yeast to it. We're gonna put a Y yeast 1056 on this guy. We'll talk to you in a minute. Well, we're getting down in there. Oh, let's get a little light. I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Oh. All right, we're getting ready to pitch our yeast. This is the 1056, or Y yeast 1056, all American ale yeast, a nice, clean. Uh, we got the temperature down a little bit further. We're shooting for about 66, 67. Now I'm just gonna pitch this guy in here. This came out of a starter that I made so this is double batch. Um, there we go. Put that guy on there. Now just so you know, I did sanitize this entire container prior to opening it just to make sure that we didn't run into any little issues. All right, appreciate your time for watching our video. I'm gonna pitch this other one and we'll call it a night. And there we go, that's the beauty. We're pitching a starter. It's already fermenting nice and hard. This is less than 24 hours after pitching it on there. It's Definitely going to town. Starting to think about putting a blow off tube on it. Oh no, airlock number two, filled with Croizen. Time for a blow off tube. Yeah, I had to go to the blow off tube. And now we're back to an airlock. I went to the S-type to be able to gauge it a little bit better on the activity level. And it's moving right along. <laughs> 